Thank you for uh, joining us in Worthing, Lucy, this evening on a very hot May uh, evening. Um, so your talk this evening about uh, Jane Austen at home, can you tell us a bit more about it and the book itself? Well, I think that Jane Austen isn't just an important writer. I think she's an important human being. I yeah. really love Jane Austen. I'm completely not objective about her. And in this new book, Jane Austen at Home, I've travelled around the country and I've visited all the different places that she lived, including a spell in Worthing. Okay. I think that what you quickly get to is the idea that she didn't live her whole life in grand country mansions, dancing with noblemen, going to tea parties, which you might think if you've seen feature films mm. of her novels. Mm. Actually, she was just a bit lower down in society than that. Mm. Uh, and also her family were what we might call downwardly mobile. So they were getting poorer and poorer and living in slightly worse places. Mm, mm. So she didn't have a luxurious life. Yeah. And uh, she could have married money. That's what everybody expected her to do. Yeah. But she chose instead to take this risk of becoming a writer. And mm. I like that. Excellent. So would you say that you're kind of like almost challenging conventions a bit like that has been portrayed in the movies? You're kind of showing uh, Jane Austen in a slightly different light perhaps? I hope so. I hope mm. so because the Victorians, they created this image of Jane Austen that they were very comfortable with, which is that she was almost a little old lady, a bit like Miss Marple, producing all these books with no apparent effort. Now, we know that that is totally wrong. She was only 41 years old when she died, and she was a very bitter, naughty, quick-witted person. Uh, it depends on your view of Miss Marple, actually. Is she really a sweet old lady, or does she have a bit of steel underneath? Maybe Jane Austen and Miss Marple have more in common than I think. <laughs> exactly, and of course, who can believe that? It's been 200 years, of course, since she died. Which, and um, she, so her famous title, of course, is that she uh, wrote her final unfinished novel, Sa um, Sanditon, yes. uh, while staying here, which yes. is believed to be everything in Worthing but name. <laughs> um, do you know, could you tell us a little bit more about that, perhaps? Certainly. Now, I got all of this from an excellent book that's called The Real Sanditon, ah. and it's by a local historian called Anthony Edmonds. And he sets out a very convincing argument about how when Jane came on a long holiday here in 1805, she met the local um, resort promoter, a gentleman who said, come and invest here, build hotels, here, here, this is, this is, the, this is the place to be. And uh, there are very sort of physical features of the town of Worthing as it was then that seem to tie in with her, her fictional seaside resort called Sanditon. Wonderful. And... Um... You, of course, have, have delved into lots and lots of history. Do you have a particular era that is your favourite? Well, um, essentially, I'm a museum curator. I, I'm, uh, I'm working most of the time at historic royal palaces, yeah. where I look after Hampton Court Palace and the Tower of London and other sites. And um, so, as, as a historian, I have to go where the exhibition programme takes me. You know, oh, I, have to, I have to skip through the centuries. Yes. Because we look after the, uh, the Norman White Tower yeah. of the Tower of London, and we go right up to the modern royal family at Kensington Palace. Mm -hmm. So I tend, to, I tend to start a new project, and I get really into it, and I can't imagine working in any other time period. Yeah. But then, all too soon, it's like, now you're going to the Tudor age. <laughs> and then I get into that as well. <laughs> At the moment, I'm going to say the Georgian period, because that's exactly where we are this evening. I would say it must feel like you travel around the TARDIS a bit with the amount of different kind of eras you're jumping back and forth from there. Yeah, a bit, yeah, yeah. Mm. It's, it's, that's one of, the, one of the pleasures of being a historian, I think. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you've been to Worthing a few times before. The audience here love you, and there's always a full house at the Connaught Theatre. <laughs> um, and you've discussed murder, the Georgians, and of course, tonight, Jane Austen. Do you have any thoughts at what might be in the pipeline for the future or any upcoming projects? Well, we are thinking about another anniversary that's coming up, which is oh. the birth of Queen Victoria wow. in 1819, 200 years since she was born. Yeah, that's oh, incredible. Might, might be working on something to do with that. Mm, most definitely. And just on a final note then, um, do you have a particular um, you know, side of your work that you enjoy most? Do you love... You know, um, like you say, as a curator, or do you love being on TV or giving talks? Is there something in particular you love doing the most? Those three things that you've mentioned, mm. like working on an exhibition or giving a talk or uh, giving a television programme, they're kind of the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> because any museum curator has to give a guided tour to a group of school kids or mm. give a talk in the evening or, or research, research a topic to produce a new, a new guidebook. 
So when I'm lugging him out on the television, I just think it's a continuation of the same battle by yeah. other means, which is to do my very best to get people interested in history. Magnificent. Well, thank you very much for talking to me, Lucy. That's a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.